I've known Ian for 28 years, where we met when we were an optimist at an event in England. We were very young, and uh, we were doing a national championships. We were too young to go sailing that day. It was a very windy day, and both our parents said, oh no, you can't go out. So we met each other playing Lego, trying to have, make Lego boats, and they blew along the wall. That's the first time I remember meeting Ian, and since then we've been good friends. My name is Ian Percy. I'm an Olympic and America's Cup sailor. Um, I've been involved with the star class for, for about 10 years now. My main successes in sailing, I've been to four Olympic Games now and had success in three, starting with a gold medal in 2000 in the Finn dinghy actually, the single-handed men's dinghy, before a gold and a silver in the star class with my sailing partner and long-term friend, Andrew Simpson. On the boat now, we sail, it's an interesting dynamic where obviously I've done a lot of steering myself, so it was quite strange going to the front of a star and doing different, not holding the tiller. Ian does the tactics upwind because he can see. When, obviously when you're crewing in the star you don't see much when it's windy. But downwind I do the tactics generally and uh, we work together on the strategies and the plan to make sure we try and do a good job. So we're very lucky, we have a really good 50-50 team which is quite nice and, and to say with someone so good is fantastic. The uh, star class has been an Olympic class for almost a hundred years now and it it's, there's a good reason for that. It's because it manages like no other class for me in sailing to test your skill level on, on lots of different criteria. You need to be very strong technically. There's a degree you can develop the boat and change things. And you need to have a real overall knowledge of masts and sails and boats. On top of that, it's incredibly hard physically. But maybe its highlight is its tactical sailing. Being a keel boat, the racing's incredibly close. The speed of the boat, for all the work that we put in, we get ourselves about 0.01 of a percent advantage. And because of that, really, the race is won and decided by your reading of the wind and your playing of the risk against the other boats. And that side of it I find really enjoyable. And it's why I, I think for anyone to keep their racing skills sharp, the star class is the place to stay. I'm really excited about the Star Sailors League because it's got an opportunity for these top sailors to continue in the boat that they love and be tested in the ways that I've talked about. Um, there's so much depth of talent within the Star class, it's incredible. At the last Olympic Games there was something like 15 Olympic medals, 10 world champions in Olympic classes. And that's compared to the other classes put together times three. And it's that talent, that skill and experience that makes the racing the hardest that it is. And we need to keep that going. And the Star Sailors League is going to be a great opportunity. It's professional sailing. It's in great venues around the world. And it's going to be really exciting to get back out on the water against those great sailors. I remember when I first got out on, a, on my own in a boat when I was about six years old. It's one of my earliest childhood memories, that sense of freedom. Suddenly my parents weren't telling me what I could and couldn't do and I could go anywhere. And I think that sense of freedom and love of the ocean has stayed with me through my whole 30 year sailing career. The fact that the mobile phone can't come with you, the computer can't come with you. There's nothing quite like being at sea, being in a boat, especially a boat like the Star that's got all that history and tradition wrapped up in its design. It's a sense of escapism, I guess, in a way, as well as the, the fierce competitiveness at the same time.